Um, let's go to these fires in Australia. Fires in Australia just pushed Sydney's air quality 12 times above hazardous level. Australia is on fire. For several weeks, several weeks, unprecedented fire conditions have torched around 2.7 million hectares of the eastern states, almost three times more than what was lost in the 2019 Amazon fires. Three times. Worryingly, the danger spreads far beyond the immediate path of the flames. On Tuesday... Giant smoke clouds produced by the rampant bushfire saw air pollution in Sydney spike to over 12 times the hazardous levels. As the city choked under a toxic blanket, the likes of which few have ever witnessed. Certainly, in Sydney, we have experienced very poor air quality episodes in the past, and the one I'm most aware of is in 2009, is the 2009 dust storm episode where we had extremely high levels, NSW Director of Environmental Health Richard Broom told media. But certainly, the smoky period we've been experiencing for, for the past month or so, it is unprecedented. So these conditions are a risk to people's health. So under the Air Quality Index, AQI, which measure, measures pollution levels in the air, readings of 100 to 149 are considered poor. Uh, 150 to 199 rates is very poor. Measurements of 200 or above are deemed hazardous to health. On Tuesday, several regions in Sydney rated above 400. So double hazardous to your health. Uh, where, what is that? What's, where's that? Where does that leave us? Um, half dead in the hospital on a gurney doubled over half alive some scored over a thousand and at least two breached the two thousand AQI threshold with the inner west suburb of Roselle only a few kilometers from uh, west of the city center recording a phenomenal AQI reading of 2,552, almost 13 times the hazardous level. This was a significant event. Environmental scientist Mark Taylor from um, Macquarie University told the Sydney Morning Herald. Wow. These air quality readings are only seen in places like India and China, and they're pushing the limits of those places. It's not a local event. It's enormous, exposing 4 to 5 million people to bushfire smoke which we know is carcinogenic. It's inescapable. We're living in a sea of smoke and particles. The hellish smoke scenes dubbed the air apocalypse. Uh, public uh, hospital admissions increased. Public transport was disrupted. Disrupted. I can't speak today. Spoke, smoke alarms prompted building evacuations and residents scrambled to buy face masks to afford themselves a better chance of protection from inhaling particles carried in the haze. Australia's Conservative Prime Minister Scott Morrison, or SCOMO, has attracted sharp criticism from many for downplaying the well-known link between climate change and the ongoing bushfire, bushfire crisis. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> mum's the word. Ixnay on the Imit Clay Ainge Che. While fires are not Directly attributable to the changing climate, extremely dangerous fire conditions are fueled by rising temperatures and intense droughts. Are they now? 700 homes have been destroyed. Untold wildlife has been slayed. Have you guys watched those pictures of koalas? Yet another headline. Um, I've got to do better in catching all these headlines. But, you know... There was something about koalas being functionally extinct after some wildfires. Was it a week or two weeks ago? And there's just some horrifying footage of these koalas like walking on the fire and their their paws are burnt and they are like crying and screaming. It's it's tough to watch. It's really tough to watch. Like I had a hard time. Um Yeah. So, Australia continuing to be um, beaten about everywhere um, by climate change. Uh, 
Tricia Francesca Jardine says Scotty Morrison is now conceding climate change is winning and batting harder. Is he now? Well, I guess that's good that he is acknowledging. I guess that's a step. What happens now? 